how can people who are upset, frustrated, worn out, exhausted, if you can only share one message with them on how to really be effective on making a change and the thing that matters to them most, what would you say to those individuals? Well, the first thing you need to do is identify that that's a cultural pattern in our generation, right? We want a thousand channels. We want a thousand shows to be able to stream at the same time. We want to be able to have 600 different people on a menu that we can swipe through who we're going to go on a date with tonight. We have Amazon Prime. It delivers today. We have, you know what I mean? Like Instant we, gratification, we don't, options. We don't do yeah. slow weight loss or weight gain anymore. It's like, where are the shortcuts? It's a generation taught to look for shortcuts, to look for a quick fix, to look for instant gratification. And so recognizing that as a cultural phenomenon that's never existed before because pre-technology, we just didn't have access to it. I'm sure the inclination was always there. It's never good for you. Yes. We have too much content. We are overstimulated. We're spending too much time on screens. We're seeing mental health issues. We have too many dating options, too many apps. People are lonelier than they've ever been. They're having less sex than they've ever had. The birth rate, I guess, is declining. Like all kinds of things are going wrong from having too many options, too much convenience, right? We are seeing people's health decline because of fast food. And so when we look at people losing weight with these extreme measures, be it pills, injections, uh, like very, very severe uh, diets that are unsustainable, 5% of which work, 95% of which fail. Like Those aren't good for people. They can lead to eating disorders or heart problems, or all kinds of different health issues if you're taking substances to speed up your weight loss. I was talking in, um, I was talking in the Senate like not long ago about the fact that in, in muscle build products that are predominantly uh, targeting boys, in a lot of them they're finding Viagra and heavy metals. Mm. all just quick fix quick fix mm -hmm. quick fix there's no such thing as a quick fix nothing that has ever been done at speed can ever work it always causes mess chaos and harm so while i understand wanting anything fast patience and discipline are two things that are no longer encouraged in our society we don't even allow for human beings to grow and change anymore we expect them to instantly be updated with all of the perfect opinions that are constantly changing all of the time. So we have to take a step back and look at the fact that we are a sick society. Wow. Mentally, physically, socially. And so once we're realistic about the fact that the quick fix doesn't work, I think we're able to return to, okay, what does incremental change look like? The only kind of change that ever lasts. Right. Incremental change. It's kind of slow change. It's slow, slow change. It's slow bit by bit by bit by bit. And that allows you to have time to be careful. It allows you to have time to consider. It allows you to have time to change your mind. Strategize, yeah. test it out, see how this My feels. My rise to fame yeah. way too fast. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I felt like I was in the middle of a tornado. I didn't have time to look at myself or look at the way that I was coming across or look at the impact of the people that, that I most wanted to reach. I didn't want to reach the people who already agree with me. And now those are the only people that are probably listening to my podcast that I mean to be for everyone. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't see it, it was too, it was all too fast. Nothing fast ever works. Wow. It's ne nothing good comes from it. So what does incremental change looks like, look like? Incremental change looks like starting to educate yourself. It, it involves listening to people's opinions who are opposed to you, which you're not supposed to do. Um, not just shutting them Nowadays, out. Nowadays, you're not even supposed to follow anyone that has a different opinion or who did something wrong. Because then you'll be judged for following Follow them too. Follow those people. Follow those people. Do, look Learn from and them. see. Read their stuff. Watch see, their content. Develop critical thinking skills as to why you disagree with them. Research. Learn. When you have a family member who says something that you find egregious that you disagree with, whatever political side you're on, learn how to debate. Learn Don't just how run to away oppose. and shame them and make them Give wrong. Give them the facts. Learn how to convince each other again not just shut each other down and dispose of each other. Change the circle you're in. If we can all just focus on the circle we're in and stop fighting with celebrities who we way over deified anyway <laughs> and stop fighting with, you know, our great-grandfather who isn't... Did something you know, in the war yeah, back yeah, in the yeah, day whatever. or whatever, yeah. Like, let's just, let's just work on our inner circle and try to make an influence there 
change the way that we interact with others because that will change the way that person goes on to interact with someone else and open up our scope of who we are yeah willing to just listen to because i sometimes wonder if the reason that both sides are so afraid to listen to each other is because they're worried they might be convinced or they're worried they might find out they were wrong Ooh, and then i like that and whether or not that's true that's not a good place to move from as a human being your beliefs are shaken it shakes yeah. your identity yeah and this is just it right so i was talking to this psychologist on in dm on instagram in which she said that identity and opinion have become completely interlinked she sees that a lot with the people who come into her office explain that more so it means that like you know Back in, back in our day, um, <laughs> we grew up not knowing anyone else's political ideology or what their parents represented or what their beliefs were about almost anything. We used to just have polite meals and then, you know <laughs> what I mean, like arguments about like more trivial things. Uh -huh. It was a simpler time. It wasn't necessarily a, a great time, but it was a simpler time. And we were able to acknowledge that if someone had an opinion we don't like, that's just their opinion that we don't like. And we had friends who might have been deemed problematic or different but we kind of accepted that well that's just like a part of them i don't like but i can see the rest of the individual now we can't see the rest of the individual anymore the bit that we don't like tarnishes everything about them and erases their history of anything they did that was that's good what I like. it's yeah. scary it's scary like we see this all the time with public figures it's like someone can do so many great things and then they make one mistake and then we disregard everything they've ever done and we want to get rid of them without thinking like oh, a lot of people might suffer if we completely get rid of that person because they're actually quite helpful. We used to be able to see when someone was more helpful than harmful and see that we can just work on the bit that's harmful. But now we just throw everyone away. Yeah. And so I think that is something that concerns me. And, I, I, and, and so when it comes to the, the identity and opinion is that identity and opinion is no longer a separate thing. Because of social media, identity and opinion have kind of like woven together and now they kind of exist as one. So mm. before when someone would say, oh, I disagree with your opinion, it just meant I disagree with your opinion. But now it means- We can still be friends. I disagree with you fundamentally. Right. I disagree with who you are and who you've become. And I'm defining you as this person. I'm freezing you in stone as this person forever. Opinions or political beliefs or political backgrounds is not necessarily always your enemy. They're just afraid. They've been on whatever side, felt so much misinformation. And, and so much bias and so much rhetoric mm. to see you, whoever you are, as the enemy.